Kirkland's has these beautiful chalky pumpkins with different colors and little gold stems along with these harvest acorns. I thought let's pop in Dollar Tree and see if we can't find something in here so we can dupe these high end pieces on a budget. And as usual, Dollar Tree did not disappoint. It is that time of the year so they had lots of fall items to choose from and these already had little gold stems. So I just removed the tags off the bottom and in the event that you struggle with that, I like to use my heat gun to warm up the tags and then they just pop right off. Next I grabbed some painters tape and started piecing off the sections of the stem that we want it to keep that gold ish color the other ones are kind of like a rose gold but you guys know where I'm going with this I wanted to section them off so we could keep that pretty color and then just paint the actual pumpkin pieces if you want you are welcome to cover over all three stems I decided just to do two and then leave the acorn like this. The acorn we're going to paint white. We're going to paint one of the pumpkins blue and the other one green. These pieces are ceramic, but what they're painted with reminds me of like a metal finish. So whenever you're doing pieces like that, it's always a good idea to grab a paint that you know is going to work well with that surface. From experience, I know Waverly works really well with different surfaces. And if you're not familiar, you could use chalk paint or multi-surface but just check the directions they usually let you know I knew that putting Waverly and mixing it with these acrylic paints was going to give me a nice hold as well as good coverage it took me two coats to get these completely done and then I just let them dry and people you would think it's smooth sailing from here you know just peel the painters tape off to reveal a beautiful stem underneath but oh no to get to this, it probably took me the same amount of time to paint the pumpkins as removing this painter's tape. I don't know why it was so difficult. I mean, it was absolutely worth it. I think that touch of color on the pumpkin with that beautiful stem just really ties all of these pieces together. Love how these turned out. What do you guys think? Oh, how I love some simple, easy, high-end looking DIYs, especially when it comes to glass pieces. Dollar Tree has a bunch of glass pieces to choose from, but I thought this one resembled our Kirkland's piece pretty well, at least when it comes to the overall shape of it. Now it did have this little glass rim, which you're really not going to see once we put some twine on there. You're welcome to glue your twine on, but I like to save money and I make a lot of these videos. So I didn't want to glue this twine on here in case I wanted to take it off. So a little tip is just to tie it on there. And then when you get to the very end, you leave yourself enough room that you can just loop that twine underneath the existing loop and then you pull it tight. This is going to give you the ability to just take that sucker right on off and then reuse it as the season goes on, as the next project comes along. And yes, I know it's only $1.25, but some days every penny counts. And then I just trim the excess off around the twine. I know some of y'all like to burn it. I don't trust myself <laughs> with fire. I leave that to the adults. Now you can put any type of floral you want in here. I'm gonna give you a couple options in the reveal, but for the seasons as they come along, this is simple, elegant, and beautiful. I have been really loving the arch decor lately. So when I seen these two pieces from Kirkland's, I'm like Dollar Tree has some arch frames. We can absolutely try and dupe these pieces. But first thing you're going to notice here is that our frames are not wood. So I removed everything off the frames, including the glass pieces. So this way we could create a faux look starting out with a white base. Now it's important to make sure whatever paint you're using is plastic friendly. I know that this stuff works really well on plastic, so that's why I went with it. Feel free to use whatever type of paint works best for you. Starting with a white background, it's going to give us a nice clean base for our next step. 
Once your pieces are dry and they're mostly covered, grab you some antique Waverly wax and a paintbrush. Then put a nice coat on the frames. Now I decided to paint just half the frame at a time and that's because this stuff dries fairly quickly and you want to be able to wipe back some of that wax. You can use a paper towel for this. Be mindful if you are using a baby wipe because you could end up wiping off that paint underneath of the antique Waverly wax. I did the same thing for the second frame and then let these dry. There are plenty of ways you could go about creating the inside, but I decided that I wanted to just take some rice paper and cut out sections to put inside the frames. You could absolutely use a napkin or you could use decoupage paper or you could use a stencil. There are so many different variations of this DIY that you could recreate but I decided just to cut out a little section on a poster board so I had some stability on the back of my rice paper and then plop it on in these beautiful faux wood frames. And I love how these turned out. Trays are perfect for seasonal decor. When I seen this piece, I was inspired to create something a little bit simpler using Dollar Tree's large wood planks that they came out with. Now people, they are a little bit rough around the edges. It's gonna require some elbow grease to get that off. I sanded all this down by hand. It took a couple minutes because it is really rough. But when you're done, it's so worth it, and then you're really ready to go. I grabbed some antique Waverly wax to use for our stain and a baby wipe to put a nice thin layer all over this piece. Our Kirkland's piece had some wood slats in it. Now, if you want that look, you would need to use several pieces, but I'm gonna show you a way to use the stain and get a faux slat look right after this dries. For the design in the center, I'm going to use a transfer. You could absolutely use your Cricut and print out a design if you have one. You could use a stencil. You could decoupage on here. There are so many different ways for you to be able to do that. But I'm going to use this Hello Autumn piece right here from this TDS dry rub on transfer. Once I cut that out, I set it to the side and grabbed a little piece of cardboard so I could use that to create a straight line. Now, if you got a roller, people use a roller, but I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> use what I had that was straight that was closest to me and cardboard it is. I'm sure you've seen people use a pencil, if not me, to create faux wood slats, but you can absolutely on wood take antique Waverly wax, a paintbrush, and a baby wipe to create faux wood slats as well. This is just going to look more organic and if you just take a moment to blend the paint into the sides of the line that you're creating, it will look pretty amazing. Before you go applying a transfer or a decoupage or really anything onto Antique Waverly Wax, just give it a minute to sit and dry. I've used several different sealers to seal over these transfers, but for this particular project, I'm just gonna use some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. This way, if anyone happens to be using that in an area that might get some water or it needs to get wiped off, it's gonna protect the stain as well as the transfer. I grabbed some handles I had in my stash. I think I picked these joints up from Lowe's. They're like a dollar, they're really inexpensive, and I always keep them just because I think they look amazing as handles on pretty much any project. It's not an exact dupe, but I absolutely love this little inspiration piece. Piece. And if you want to put teeny tiny screws in your handles, you go right ahead. Just make sure they don't pop through the wood on the other side. I just glued mine down. Some 
something about all the fall things on top of this lantern just called me to it. I'm like, we can definitely do this using these beautiful wood pieces from Dollar Tree and a palette. We're going to need a palette. I mean, you don't have to use a palette, but I'm going to use a palette. And these little wood dowel pieces that are kind of like in a rectangular shape I pick up from Home Depot. You could absolutely use tumbling blocks for this section if you want to. I just had these dowels and thought it would be easier to have just one solid piece instead of having to put the tumbling blocks together. It just really took out a step. I then measured them to size to what I felt would make sense for the decor piece. You absolutely make this as large as you would like. I had some decorative trim pieces that I picked up from Home Depot in my stash and decided to cut them down to size to go in the front of these just to add a little bit of a high-end decorative touch. Since I've been using this wood glue, clamping stuff together for like 30 minutes gives me a nice hold and I'm able to keep on creating. So once they were dry, I then put a little bit of hot glue onto the bottom to get these to hold. However, when I was doing this one, I let it go and did not take into account that we still had the clamps on there. So people, here's why I chose the palette. It literally fits right on top of here just perfectly. The ends of these square dowels settle right in the nooks of where the palette is. It makes for a perfect flat top to this lantern so we can attach a floral foam on here. If you want to put a normal lantern top, you go right ahead. This just made sense to me. I then took some of my wood glue and painted around all the creases on all the connection points. So this way we had a really good hold. I applied a little bit of weight to the top of it and then let this dry for three hours. You can paint this whatever color you would like or stain it. I'm using antique Waverly wax and a baby wipe and just applying a nice thin layer to the entire piece. The cool thing I felt about this build is since I used a palette on top, I could just take a little bit of tacky glue put the floral foam on and when that floral foam has served its purpose, I could easily shave it off and replace it as necessary. This way this could be reused throughout the year as often as you would like and you're not messing up a really nice top that you might have put on here, especially since we're not going to see it anyway. Even though these welcome tabletop signs aren't that expensive, I still felt like we could remix this using some of Dollar Tree's metal words. You get three in a pack, so you really get a little bit of versatility here. If you want to paint these, you absolutely can, but I'm not going to. And I want to show you two different ideas for this dupe. One is just to grab a piece of scrap wood. I had this one laying around that had a little dent in it and our harvest fits in there perfectly. Another, of course, is to use tumbling tower blocks. Are you shocked? I grabbed my tacky glue and I attached several of the tumbling blocks together until they were the exact length of the little scrap piece that I had on the side, which in case you're wondering is five tumbling blocks and you'll need a total of 10, the exact same size, leave them split apart so they can dry. You can paint these whatever color you want. I'm just going to use some of my black satin multi-surface paints and give these each a nice coat. 
When they were dry, I grabbed my favorite Gorilla Glue Gel. And on the welcome sign that I'm putting in the tumbling tower blocks, I put at the bottom of the front and the back on the farthest sides of the pieces of the words that I knew were gonna dip down into the tumbling blocks along with a little smoosh of glue on each end. I then took a minute putting it right in the spot that made sense, pressing it together and I grabbed some clamps to help hold it in place for about 20 minutes. Where it gets tricky is if you want to do a piece of scrap wood like I am here with the divot in the center, you're going to need to hold that in place while it dries or use an accelerator to speed up the drying process. It will absolutely hold, it's just going to require a little bit of patience. For anyone actually questioning whether or not it was holding, I wanted to pick it up and turn it to the side. So you can see it's really just the Gorilla Glue Gel holding this little metal word into place on here. I got full confidence in my Gorilla Glue Gel. If you enjoyed these dupes, check out this video right here for more inspiration. As always, people, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today and until next time.